So of course the episode with seven stages is the one where things get all Game of Thronesy. This innocuous TT overall downhill, and yet the only thing that went according to plan was the win by Omega Pharma's Tony, not George RR, Martin. Chris Froome suffered fidgeting about and standing during a TT for the first time anyone can remember, while Tinkoff Saxo's Alberto Contador put nearly a minute into him. But the big moment was race leader Nairo Quintana of Movistar careening into a guardrail, demolishing his bike and losing four minutes on GC to the new race leader Contador. Though to be fair, Quintana kept driving the bike to the last possible moment, eventually riding away from a crash that could have been a lot worse. So of course after that effort, Quintana crashes out in a meaningless pack tumble. Despite Contador on the Iron Throne, it was Katusha doing the bulk of the work chasing down Sky's Vasil Kirienka, who was recaptured at 8.9k to go. Sky then went to the front but backed off a bit once Chris Froome went into difficulty 3k later. Sensing weakness and seeing an isolated Contador, Giant Shimano's Warren Bargui and Belkin's Robert Haysink took off, with the Belkin riders staying clear as movie star's Gorka Izagire attempted to limit the gap. A battling Froome was picking his moments well, suffering at 4.1k, then creeping up on a calm patch moments later, before going back into Dangleland after attacks from Garmin Stan Martin and Kofidis Stani Navarro. After more surge and regroup, Astana's Fabio Aru decided someone had to win the stage and put in one attack to bridge to Haysink, and a second to break free a K from the line, taking a 6 second win over Movistar's Valverde, Katusha's Joaquin Rodriguez, Contador, and Froome. Time bonus is bringing the Movistar rider to within 20 seconds of the race lead. Sprint Day, kind of that one episode that's all Jojen Reed storyline. We'll be quick, Cannondale's Makias Krejcik was the long breakaway, BMC's Manuel Kinziato made a late run at it, but what really stole the show was lousy camera work. Wow, this is great. Okay, I can see these two guys, but wait, there was a crash? By the time we get back to the sprint, it's Giant Shimano leading out and Lamprey's Max Ricci being a jerk. Closest John Degenkolb comes to losing is when Tom Bonin, yeah, remember when he used to sprint? Tries to get the drop on him from 200 meters away, but the points leader launches a moment later and easily holds the Omega Pharma Rider off. Stage 13, supposed to be transitional, but an uphill lump finish means GC potential. Largest break, Orica Green Edge towing the field in hopes that Michael Matthews can poach the win, and Caja Rural's Luis Mas Bonet, still inexplicably leading the KOM competition, is off the back with Degen Kolb at 42k to go. Astana's Alexei Lutsenko was the last escapee caught some 7k out. OGE was swamped pretty quickly thereafter by GC teams until Omega Pharma's Gianluca Brambilla made the first big punch inside 3k to go. Navarro made a bigger one at 2k and while Dan Martin surged a few times, Valverde was too close to not try to follow and Contador too close to let Valverde go. Navarro took the stage and Valverde just nipped FDJ's Nasser Buhani for fourth five seconds later, almost having the Frenchman's gap to Degenkolb in the points competition. Finally, the KOM pretender Mas Bonet has been ousted. The new leader is Luis Leon Sanchez, also of House Caja Rural. As the break wound into the closing, absurdly steep kilometers, Garmin's rider Hesedal turned up the heat at 2k, but Tinkoff's Oliver Zaug makes a great counter up the shorter, steeper line inside a hairpin to open a gap. 0.7k and 3.5 minutes down the road, the peloton quickly fell to the heads of state, with Valverde having to do a lot of his own work setting pace, and Froome definitely off of the group. Contador kicked on an 18% grade, and as Rodriguez and Aru were clawing their way back, some motos drove through. Then as Valverde begins to fall off, there's another moto and Chris Froome. Here's Zaug and Hesedal up front, two motos between them, but then we're going to add another for some reason. By 300 meters to go, Hesedal is working through this leadout, basically attacking off the wheel of the last one just outside 150 meters to pass Zaug and take the stage. Meanwhile, Froome had found his way back to the front group, and with no motos in front of him, other than the camera filming this, he made a hard attack, eventually gapping Contador at 500 meters out, putting 7 seconds into the race leader and nearly 30 into Valverde. Bizarre uphill downhill uphill finish to this one, and kinda hard to tell how it was won. This bit at 5.2k is all I got of Lamprey's Chemislav Nemnitz going clear of OGE's Cam Meyer in the breakaway. In the GC group, Froome was dangling again, with another moto in what I'd say is too small of a gap. But at least the Skyrider was apologetic about this stem staring related incident. Beyond moto ineptitude, Froome's strategy also took advantage of the attack and weight style of other GC riders, allowing him to catch up just outside 4k to go, then after another surge stop in the closing kilometers to limit his deficit to just 17 seconds. In the end, Nemnitz finished just 5 seconds ahead of Valverde and Rodriguez, who gapped Contador on the run-in to claw within 30 seconds of the lead and into a dead heat with Froome for third, respectively. Stage 16. A big break is an unhappy break, and some fisticuffs develop between Brambila and Tinkoff's Ivan Rovny, broken up by officials telling them that they were both pretty, but then later that they were also both disqualified. 
Canandale's Alessandro Demarchi dropped Rombilis' teammate without pools just after that at 11k to go, and I think for the first time in this Vuelta, a determined Sky run-in led directly to a Chris Froome attack, one to which only Contador could respond. With over a minute in the bank against Froome, the race leader was content to sit on and let the Sky Rider give him more time on Valverde. Despite in turn gaining time on Rodriguez, Froome made several attacks but couldn't drop Contador, who finally went clear inside the closing kilometer for a 15 second victory, leaving Froome to console himself with pulling into within 3 seconds of Valverde in the battle for second. And being named Lord of Harrenhal. Probably. I'm Cosmo Catalano, and that's how the race was won. Not a chance to escape it, I take shit from no man and never come.